What's going on guys? So we decided to bring the trailer out. This is our very first trip. We wanted to make it really short. I know I promised you guys a walkthrough of the RV. Uh, this is not that video. Promise you guys we're gonna get to that soon. We're waiting for a couple of things to come in before we go through the walkthrough video. But we wanted to make a trip out here because we wanted to go through and make sure that everything worked, go work out all the kinks and stuff like that. Uh, you know, we'll learn how like the solar system and all that kind of stuff. Nope, not that solar system. Uh, make sure all of that stuff works. We're here in a beautiful area that I found on Google Maps. Never been here before. We're only a couple hours from Phoenix. The clouds look amazing. I can't wait to go out. We're gonna have sunset tonight and then sunrise in the morning. Looking forward to shooting this place. Lots of saguaro cacti everywhere, lots of choyas. We got some beautiful mountains here, so I think it's gonna be an awesome, awesome shoot. Two hours after we had so many high altitude clouds in the sky, it looked like it was going to be just an absolute monster of a sunset. Now, absolutely blue skies. I mean, not a cloud to be seen. Way off to the north, there's some clouds, but nothing here. Oh, you know, this is the way it is. It's been our luck the last, like, I don't know, even in Wyoming when we went out there, it was, uh, the conditions weren't that great. Uh, I had the smoke everywhere. We came home, we had like one, I think one outing, which was last video that you guys saw that had some clouds. I don't know, we're gonna try and make something out of it though. Probably wondering why I've set my tripod obnoxiously high. This is as high as my tripod will go. I don't use a center column or else I could go even higher, but I just, I don't like center columns. The reason why I'm going so high, I'm gonna set up here, is I have two big saguaros right in front of me here. And if I get any closer, they're so tall that they break towards the peak of this mountain that I'm trying to shoot here. And I don't like that. I don't want these saguaros breaking the horizon, at least these two right here, which is right in the mid ground. It's right towards the focus, uh, which is this mountain here, which is my subject. This is the only option I have to do this particular composition. Everything's being backlit right now. And all this cacti, the choyas, the saguaros are all being backlit. To me, the desert being backlit like this is just one of the most beautiful scenes. I absolutely love shooting this type of stuff. I'm right here on the road. I just parked down the way here. Walking just along the road, I saw this and you have all these beautiful swirls in the mid ground. You have these choyas in the foreground and then you have this beautiful mountain. Unfortunately, there's no clouds, but the sun's about to, to break the horizon down here uh, towards the right on the frame. And I'm gonna try and get a sun star, get that light backlit. I think it's gonna be a nice scene, but just because I couldn't get any further forward, this is my only option really right now for this uh, shot that I want. All right, I'm just gonna hit record on this and show you guys the back of the camera here. Uh, so what I'm doing is, so I'm gonna hit F16 and I'm gonna focus stack. So you can see here, I have choyas throughout from right here in the beginning of the frame, right here in front, all the way through to the mid ground where the saguaros are. And then of course you got the background, that mountain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to focus stack and I'm probably gonna have to exposure blend as well because I'm shooting directly into the sun. I may have to actually also when I'm doing the exposure blending is take one exposure uh, for the sky and then put my fingers over which I showed you guys in a recent video how to get rid of that sun flare 
because I'm probably gonna get sun flare shooting like this. So it's gonna be a very complicated shot. Probably gonna have to be, like I said, multiple exposures for focus stacking, multiple exposures for exposure blending. And then if I have to, when I'm doing the focus stack, I'll you know hold my hand over the sun. That way I get rid of that sun flare. So again, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a fun one. Okay, I have uh, one composition dialed in and my tripod set up and level and everything because it will be a panorama shot and now I'm getting greedy because there is that one very interesting looking cloud. That's a lot of the times how I work my composition. I look where there's a interesting cloud that maybe, you know, could um, catch beautiful purple and orange colors. I'm looking first for the cloud and then for the right composition that goes well with that cloud. And I think now I have found something that is very interesting and it's here. I gotta be careful. There is all kinds of landmines here. The Arizona landmines are the little babies of the uh, Jumping Joya cactus. If you step in them, they will just follow you and eventually they will end up in your leg. I'm not very Arizonan today. I'm wearing shorts. I was just too hot, so I uh, wouldn't put on the long pants. <laughs> anyway, I think I uh, found something that I like. Uh, let me show you. Ooh, it's getting close here. Better go back to my first composition so that I don't miss uh, the last light. Here we go. So what I'm doing here is another while the bugs are eating me. What I'm doing here is another shoot another panorama and right now the sun is about to dip below the horizon. I already heard Mike talking about getting a sun star so I'm just doing the same thing that he is doing. <laughs> no, I'm just trying uh, if I can catch the, uh, the sun star too and if I don't that's fine too because I'm not sure if I will integrate that part uh, where the sun is going down. I'm not sure if I will even integrate that part into my photo. The sun is like at the, all the way to the right so I'm not sure if I will even fit in the, the sun star into my photo. Also gotta do the wave of hatred here because there's so many flies. If you know which YouTuber I'm referencing here let me know in the comments. We got a bonus shot here. Uh, there's almost a full moon. It's two nights until a full moon. Sorry, I'm trying to walk with the tripod here. Got set up with a long lens. I have some saguaros over here. Give me a second, let me. I got a little bit of a bonus shot. The full moon is gonna happen in two nights. So it's almost a full moon right now. I've got a beautiful scene here with saguaros going off into the distance. I got one main focus here of a saguaro that is got some cool arms. It's got a pretty cool shape to it. And then I have a really bright moon. I have those beautiful, beautiful blue hour colors, uh, that dark blue going up into more of a magenta and pink. It looks absolutely fantastic. Because I have a long lens, I'm at almost 130 millimeters. I'm having a focus stack. So I have this tree, the saguaro here, that's probably, I'd say it's a good, probably 40 yards away. In order to get everything sharp, I'm having a focus stack. So once again, having to do the focus stack here, that moon's really nice and bright. I like it, looks pretty cool. I am not sure if I pulled that off. It was hectic. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can use that first panorama, but just as the sun went down, I heard Mike Tooting and hooting over there and uh, he said, hey, you see that? There's clouds over there. So there's actually a bank of clouds rolling in behind this mountain range here that we're shooting. So maybe if we're lucky, fingers crossed, they will catch color and I will have a second chance of getting a panorama. And if that's the case, I will probably abandon my composition number two with that cloud right there in the background because it was, you know, it was like an okay composition, but it was not nothing. Nothing special. I way prefer this right here. Wish me luck. Second composition, which is back there with the almost full moon right now, didn't work because the cloud moved. So this cloud right here, it moved. It, so it's now not there anymore where I scattered my location. So I was a little bit too late to grab that second shot, but that's okay. That's just sometimes how it works. Uh, no need to be greedy. Oh, hi! Ooh. 
Hi. How's it going? So yesterday during the day we scouted this area. Both of us were gonna shoot right over here. Kind of a flat area, had some saguaros, had some choy cactus in there. Using a longer lens, we didn't say anything to each other. We just got out and started walking. Both of us started walking up towards this hill, the opposite direction that we didn't scout. So both of us had the same idea. I'm like, hey, where are you going? She's like, oh, to the top of this hill. I'm like, that's what I was gonna do. So uh, we're both walking up there now. So we think it dips down below. We can see this mountain right here, right in front of us. So what we're hoping for is to get to the top of this hill and have a little bit of a uh, little bit of a dip in front of us there to get some swirl cacti in the foreground. Looks like there's no clouds again, but that's okay. We're facing the opposite direction of the sun. So we should get that nice belt of Venus going across. That nice magenta blue color. It's like the earth's shadow. That's what we're going to go for. So uh, uh, she's leaving me in the dust now that I'm sitting here talking to you guys. I got to go. It is panic time. I am running around trying to find a composition. I cannot find anything. I might have one. So I'd run back, grab my tripod. Uh, it's just, this place is so hard to shoot because of all these swirls are so tall and they cover the mountain or these, the mesquite and the Palo Verde trees and the Ocotillo trees. All these trees are just, they're too tall. I can't get a line of sight of this mountain. Uh, I'm running around like crazy this morning. I should have shot the, uh, the photo I wanted to earlier, but anyway, I think I might have found something. Well, good morning, good morning. It is a nice morning right now. It's about, I would say, 13 degrees. Not really chilly, absolutely nice. Uh, this morning I'm here at a little bit of a uh, overlook. You can see behind me, it's, it's a little bit of a valley which then ends into a beautiful mountain range. This is usually what I'm looking for when I, when I want to photograph the saguaro cactus, when I want to photograph an overlook with saguaros. Because the thing is, they're so tall, they're always uh, sticking up into the sky, which I think it can be interesting if it's, if it's spread out the right way, but it's very hard to find a composition like that. I'm always looking for a composition with no cactus interfering with the sky. And this is what I found here behind me. I think it's a very interesting scene because there's one other cactus, just a baby cactus right here, that is not as tall yet. So I would say this guy is about as tall as me, so one meter and 70 centimeters. Let's see. 
about as tall as me and uh, it doesn't have any arms yet which means this cactus is uh, not that old yet um, they usually grow the first arm between uh, 50 and 70 years so I mean it's still impressive you know if you think uh, how old these cactus get some so are cactus that are between 200 and 300 years old so that's extremely impressive to me but this little guy here is perfect for my scene because I wanted to find something in my foreground gives a little bit of interest because just an overlook sometimes can be you know a little bit bland a little bit boring perfect scene right here and what I did is I took uh, three photos to uh, be able to make a panorama every three of them I did a focus stack so one photo for the foreground for the little cactus right here I'm saying little cactus but he's probably older than me anyway for the little cactus right here and then one for the background and then I switched my position of the camera and then another one foreground background and the same with the third one so I already took one photo like this with uh, that beautiful still a little bit of purple and orange sky up here and now I'm waiting for the sun to break the horizon I hope the sunlight that will light up this valley here will make the cactus glow because of their needles uh, their outline is fuzzy and that usually uh, will catch the light in a very nice way I'm uh, I'm hoping for that right now uh, also Mike said at the beginning of the video we're here to, to test our new RV and see if everything's working and we're also here to location scout for for another trip next spring uh, this area here has a lot of desert ironwood uh, trees and they bloom extremely beautiful. They're all pink and, and purple. Yeah, this area has a lot of them. So I was uh, looking for a few compositions and uh, I saw that there is one right behind me. Uh, right here. The leaves are extremely tiny. They have that bluish tint to them. I was looking the whole trip now for these trees so that I have um, an idea for a composition when we come back in spring. I found this uh, fallen branch here from one of these Palo Verde trees that are dead. It's, it's a nice foreground element leading up to the mountain. I have a, a swirl on each side of the mountain here so it's not breaking that plane of the mountain. I think I might have gotten that last bit of uh, color in the background there. Now I'm just waiting for the light to hit this big mountain here. So as soon as that sun comes up behind me, it's gonna light up this peak, give it that nice alpen glow. I'm just focus stacking right now and then uh, Wait for that light to hit. I got a second shot off as well, so we'll see how those turned out. They're not going to be anything uh, earth shattering or anything like that. It was uh, definitely rushed, so now it's time to head back, see what Chris is doing, see how she did. Well, how'd you make out? I think, okay. Yeah, gotta look and see. Well, you guys know what time it is. 